Welcome, welcome, welcome to F1 with DRS. I'm Dan Shepard. I'm joined by Matthew, Jethro, and Charlie. I wore a special outfit for you guys today. And Matt, you immediately got it. Oh, I knew it. The texture, the colors. <laughs> it was bang on. <laughs> David Beckham. Do you think you would it would have triggered anything for you, Charlie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would have clicked. Yeah, we all watch. And Jethro, you're going to be heavily involved in this. So the three of us watched the David Beckham four-part documentary this weekend while we were in Austin at the race. Have you watched it? I have not got through all of it, but I've definitely watched, I think, the first two episodes. That's key. That's the two I need you to have seen. So anyone who's not seen it, first of all, you must watch it. It's a 10 out of 10. It's phenomenal, right? Yeah, and I'm not, I don't watch soccer. I don't know anything about it, him included. Same, same. Um, I know he's good looking. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's all it. I knew. Yeah, I didn't even know if he was good at soccer or if he was just a celebrity in the yeah. soccer world. But Like the Kim Kardashian of soccer. Yeah. yeah. I also <laughs> said to Laura that I've watched a lot of documentaries where I'm like, oh, this person seems really nice or they seem pretty down to earth. But David Beckham, I was like, I've never said someone looks so sweet and kind Yo, in that position. Wow. Like uh -huh. he just seems wonderful. For the folks who haven't seen it yet and don't know the backstory, and I don't think we're ruining too much of it. But he has an, an incident in a World Cup game, which is, A, so justified it's insane. The guy shoved him down and then pushed his head into the uh, oh, into the turf. Yeah. And then he just kind of lifted his leg up, and this guy sold this huge fall. And up to that point, Beckham had been kind of a national treasure. Yeah, Jethro? Yeah, he was, he was basically the brightest spark amongst what we called our golden generation. So... This was a group of players who were world-class players. And it was the first time in a long time we felt like we had a really good chance to, to find success in the World Cup on the international stage. We have won the World Cup once in 1966. And well, we cling on it. to it. Yeah, we cling on to it very, very dearly. I thought it was way more than that. <laughs> Me too. When I think of England, I think of like, oh yeah, you got Manchester United, yeah. you got all these different teams. Ten times. Everyone's champions. obsessed with it. We have the best league probably in the world, but we have traditionally Europe and South America have had the really fantastic technical players. They they make the game look like an art form. And then in the UK, we like lump it up the pitch and have a bloke who's tall who heads the ball in. That's <laughs> that's how it's been. And that's changed over the years because we now have this huge influx of European and South American players. But yeah, historically, we are great underachievers internationally. Um, but this was the golden generation and Beckham was the, the leading light, if you like. I also want to say as a precursor to this, that I'm as much of an Anglophile as you can be without being an actual Anglophile. Like, I, I really have a sweet spot in my heart for the English. I mean, it only makes sense. I think I'm 70% from that area. But I saw a side of you guys in this documentary that I gotta say actually shook me to the core. I had no idea you guys could get so fucking mean. It's incredible. It's incredible. The entire nation was attacking this guy for, like, the most innocuous anything yeah it was hysterical i would say that so dave beckham yeah as you said he kicked out a, um, the argentinian player in a in a huge match it would have been was it the semi-final of the world cup he got a red card and got thrown out and then there were kicks at the end that they thought he would have probably been able to put one in yeah but the point is once you're sent off instead of 11 v 11 it's 11 v 10 we're already facing argentina who are a great footballing nation and it was relatively petty but absolutely forgivable <laughs> But it was like a, <laughs> it was just a metaphor for our whole footballing world. You know, whenever we have hope, it gets, it gets destroyed. And it's often by something as stupid as that. So you, you think maybe that he was the levy that broke like 50 years of resentment against? It just, it just seems so asymmetrical, this reaction and how cruel it was. Yeah, there's probably a load of things going on. You can imagine what the average, you know, these people who are deeply religious about any sport. I I find it slightly weird anyway. Like I love F1, I love various sports, but it's their whole identity. 
it becomes their identity. And that's the way football mm. is in the UK. And I guess this was in the period where football was changing anyway. The hard man sort of football world would check was changed. So now you've got David Beckham, pretty boy, long hair, yeah. you know, fashion guy, spice girl, the whole thing going on. So already there's probably a bit of simmering resentment from the average guy watching. That seems to be the other consistent theme is that there's this, like you keep hearing about tall poppy. And I always think, you know, tall poppy's everywhere. It certainly was in Detroit. You didn't want to be too big for your britches. You got taken down a peg. But I would say here it seems a lot more on display in that all of his coaches kept punishing him for really nothing because he had a girlfriend that was popular you know it was their theory that he was distracted yet he's playing better than everybody and he's clearly not distracted but there was just this resentment against him for being famous yeah i think probably there was i <laughs> yeah. think probably there was i, I mean it, it comes down to as simple as that doesn't it and he was part of you know alex ferguson who was the manager you're talking about was is a legend he he came into man united when they hadn't won anything for years and he created this period of dominance but he famously was the real boss now there's so much p player power but back then there was less and he would really tear into the players there's a famous instant when he kicked a hairdryer and it hit david beckham in the head and like all this stuff yeah he had a big gash above his eye and then they were saying yeah. he was getting makeup done to make it look worse uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah so so that to him david beckham's existence was almost the opposite of how he identified with football and how he had come up in that the documentary obviously it it emphasizes some of this stuff happening but there's no doubt he was vilified in a completely ridiculous way like mannequins hanging from <laughs> yeah from pubs oh and then that guy God. who thought he was so clever he's like it's not my noose i borrowed it <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. great. You're you're uh -huh. clear then. No no wrongdoing on your end, so long as you borrowed the gun you shot your wife with, as long as it's borrowed. <laughs> but how abusive are the crowd at US sports? Because that is, no. is a great no. tradition that I love about oh, going to a football <laughs> match. <laughs> it's well, so, it, it's like nothing is off the table. You just, these players get so much abuse. The fans are singing about putting each other in hospital. It's just, it's bizarre. <laughs> But somehow brilliant. I love it. Well, I think ours are pretty bad in the moment. We just, it's over when the game's over. Like there's people throwing yeah. bottles on fields and there's that football game where people were throwing hunks of ice at the players. And yeah, there's been riots and but, there's been some baseball yeah. games. Yeah. yeah, and but it's all in the moment. It's that game and it's done. They're not, no one's a national villain for a <laughs> no. year. Well, Detroit, they <laughs> threw live animals on the ice. To, well, uh, the octopi. The octopi. And look, but even like, let's say Ron Artez, who very justifiably beat mm. the fuck out of a couple Detroit fans who charged the court and threw drinks at them. It was a the country was split. Like I think half the people were like, "Yeah, the, those folks got what they deserve." I don't know. The only example we were tr like really thinking about it's the 180. It said he was the the golden boy, and then 30 seconds later he became the arch nemesis of all of the UK. It's so crazy. I, we've never really had anything like that. We had Kobe. Mm -hmm. You know, he had some allegations, or I don't know if they were confirmed. I hate even bringing it up, but suffice to say he went through a very rocky phase and in that stadium in Denver where the court case happened sure he would get booed but in general we don't have anyone that gets and it booed was everywhere they every go every single London soccer fan whereas in here well, it's in like, non-fan it seems yeah every Just, everyone well yeah, everyone I guess is a fan and yeah so, so then, everywhere he went he got booed as soon as he got the ball and yeah it became like a sport it looked real dangerous yeah. like w when he's arriving when when you, he goes back to play with Manchester United and he's arriving in the bus and there are 10,000 people around the bus chucking bottles at the bus and hitting the side of it it looks just straight dangerous I'm like yeah. this is this is dangerous he's like he didn't get beat to death by some out of work guy whose wife just left did you watch that game live like do you remember that game and would I you have booed it. him if you walked by him oh good question no no i wouldn't because i'm not <laughs> i'm not um i wish we would have seen jethro on one of those if i was at a ground i would have shouted abuse at him because it's funny <laughs> and that's part of the culture like yeah sure <laughs> 